It's time for the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House in Eddy Street Commons. The Mike Bray Radio Show is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. The Mike Bray Radio Show is also presented by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Xfinity, First Source Bank, Great Clips, Papa John's, St. Joseph Health System, South Bend Orthopedics, and O'Rourke's Public House. Also sponsoring tonight's show is Primrose Mishawaka and Legacy Heating and Air. Now, let's go live to O'Rourke's Public House for the Mike Bray Radio Show. Here's your host, Jack Nolan. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House, show number three already. Your team's on a roll. You're 7-2 and two on the season. But before we talk about that, and it's not over yet, you got like five minutes left in the second half, but it's exam week. The vibes you're getting, how's it going? All good news so far, but, right. but the game's not over yet. And, you know, Matt Farrell's going to be our guest tonight, and he looks like he's two inches taller because he is done with exams. He walked in, and he's standing up straighter. we got a couple guys that have tests tomorrow morning. Uh, we could not get a practice in during the day, so I'm going from here, and we're going to practice at 8.30 tonight uh, to get a session in to get prepared for Indiana since uh, it's the only – hour and a half we can find to get it in you know you and i used to joke and again 30 plus years for me some of the worst basketball that i ever had the pleasure of announcing happened that first game yeah. after exams but you know what the crossroads classic there's something about it yeah it seems to be easier for the guys to shake off that malaise because you've played you know really good basketball you won the last three you lost the first one right uh, to iu but you've won the last three including a victory over IU, you crushed Purdue last year. Have you noticed that there's just something different about it? Yeah, I think it's better than playing a home game against maybe a mid-major. Mm -hmm. And you're right, we used to have some brutal, you know, exhibitions. Uh, well, not that. just you. I mean, every every it was a lot of teams. Been here, yeah. But it is. It's a big game, whether it's Indiana or Purdue, and it's a great atmosphere. The place is sold out. It's a little bit like a postseason atmosphere, mm -hmm. NCAA tournament, ACC tournament. You, as we both know, the city of Indianapolis is just a great place to hang. And I think as we've done well and we played pretty well, more and more fans, our fans travel. Uh, now, again, Saturday afternoon is not going to be a neutral site. We know that's going to be a road game atmosphere with IU's people. But, you know, two years ago we played very well in that atmosphere. And we've already been in yes. a tough atmosphere against Illinois playing on the road and having to deliver in the second half. And I hope that helps us handle the IU crowd uh, on Saturday. We'll talk more about that as this show goes along, but I want to go back to uh, the Loyola of Chicago game. Again, another team that maybe didn't get the respect coming in that they deserve. They had just come off a victory over Creighton. Most people think Creighton mid-major, but now they're in the Big East. Yeah. I guess I guess the Big East is where? Are they between mid-major and, and Big Five right now? It's, I, I it's think pretty high-level yeah, basketball. That's high-level basketball Big East is. But, no, you're right, Jack. I mean, you know um, – Loyola, and if you look, one of the reasons our RPI is in the 30s and our strength to schedule is strong is uh, because of a Monmouth, who, by the way, did it again yes. at Georgetown, because of a Stony Brook, because of a Milwaukee, because of a Loyola. Those guys bring some power. Certainly the game, the Indiana game, is a power game. So our strength to schedule is really driving stuff. But I was happy. First half, we, were, we had a hard time guarding them. Four guards, they spread the floor. I tell you what, it was good training for Indiana. Because they spread us out with guards and ball screened and we're driving and kicking. Well, that's how Indiana plays. So, you know, we struggled with it. We got it under a little bit better control in the second half. And we played a lot of zone in the second half to help us a little bit like at Illinois. Well, and again, when I look up on occasion, I double take. Because when you go into the 2-3 right now, you look a little Syracuse-like. We've got some length. Now, look at our starting lineup when we play it. Jackson, Vastoria as your guards. Well... I don't care what defense they're in. They're two of the better defensive guards in the country. They're long, they're big, they're strong. they got great instincts playing the top of the zone. Now let's look at the back of our zone, the three guys in the back. You've got two guys with a seven-plus wingspan, you know, on both forward spots, Bonzi and B.J. Beecham. When they open their stance up, the floor looks smaller. Now we're starting to look like those Syracuse teams. And Zach August has maybe made the greatest improvement of being an anchor in the middle. When to come up and play the foul line, when to go back. 
and then we're able to rebound out exactly. of it. And we, when you know, we've always run well out of zone, and I think we can still do it. And it is a defense. It's part of our package. I don't know. I don't ever go in going. We're going to play it these many possessions. You know, you you get a feel for things and you see what's working and you ride it out. But it it, it is a good change of pace for us, and we're getting better and more confident in it. And each time you've gone into it this year, it has almost initially frozen the opposition. And a lot of people think, again, they mistake the zone for what you play in the lunchtime league. Right. You just kind of stand there and put your hands up. But mentally, it, it may be even more work because you have to be on your game. And you mentioned the rebounding. Really hard to rebound out of a zone. You have to find guys. You have right. to be active. And these guys have been that. Yeah, and it, it helps us that with that length on the back line, they can, we, we actually block shots out of zone. You know, Bonzi's wingspans. Zach's wingspan, BJ's wingspan, you know, they're able to get out and block some shots in there too, and then that gets us into transition. So, you know what, it's a, it's a work in progress. I'm kind of excited that we have something else other than man-to-man -man that we can play, and, and we believe in it, and it's, and it's won us games. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, you go into each game uh, and you, you get in it, and sometimes you ride it for 15 possessions, sometimes you ride it for three, you get out of it, you come back to it, it's... It's that kind of thing with us. And one of the things I really liked about the Loyola game, too, what you're trying to do at this time of year is to put together a complete game. I thought from an offensive perspective, yeah. you came out hot, and you played maybe the best 40 minutes of consistently good offense that you've played all year. Yeah, I think we were very much in character, and, you know, they were doubling Zach early. I thought he made great decisions out of the post early. Um, but I think, you know, the nucleus of guys, especially the starters, they're really learning how to play with each other offensively. They're learning what to move off of each other. They're getting confident. They're getting some chemistry, the word we like to use in basketball. And then we come in with Matt Farrell, Matt Ryan, Torres, and they know what they should give. So I feel like we're, we're our offensive roles are, are getting more comfortable and a little more defined. Another thing I, I did really like, kind of a tough game for Zach, and he played pretty well. Yeah. But when you're a big guy, even when you move as well as he does, and you're playing little guys, that can be a struggle to a degree. But when you went small with Bonzi in there, that's one of the bigger small lineups that anybody's going to see. You know, when we, you know, when we downshift and it's either Zach or Bonzi and then it's BJ and one of the Mats and Steve and, you know, we're, we're, then we, can, we kick our offensive efficiency up even to another notch because we can really open the floor up. We can spread it. That's so good for Demetrius and Steve, who can get in there. You've got Matt Farrell, um, you got Matt Farrell, Matt Ryan, and, and BJ all spotting up, be ready to knock down open shots. So it's uh, it, just like you're trying to figure out what defense you're going to play. When do we go to the small? When do we downshift? What's best for us? What are the matchups we like? And you know, that's something I think we we will continue to evaluate here until. You know, we may be evaluating that through January. I just hope we can win enough while we're evaluating. As we just discussed, Bonzi had a really good all-around game for you, uh, a team high tying 14 points. But another guy who had a really good all-around game was Matt Ryan. Yeah. He had uh, a team high tying 14 points, but he did a little bit of everything, including that great steal and outlet to Bonzi. Which was a big play. And, you know, you see, we see in some of his stuff right here, you know, he, he has big-time range and stretches the floor and so we love that but he's not a defensive liability a lot of young shooters in college can't hold their weight on the other end of the floor he's every bit of six seven or six eight um he's physical he's 222 pounds he can do this he goes up and rebounds the ball he rotates over and helps his teammate defensively sometimes too you know so i'm i'm you know here's the play right here this is a big steal and we're trying to make a little bit of a run and he comes in there makes a big time play so we're um you know, we got to keep grooming him, and he's, he's going to play major minutes for us. He's a weapon. You know, and I think anybody paying attention knows the Monmouth loss. It's not a bad loss. Uh, Alabama, really athletic team who played well against you. You lost two games where you didn't play as well as you could, but you lost two games against quality competition by a total of three points. And since you came back from Florida, and I think you made the point even after the Alabama game, people disappointed. You want to get out of there 2-1, and one, but you got better down there, and that's one of the reasons you get in those tournaments. Yeah, I think we learned about our team. We learned some things the hard way. Um, and, you know, it was a little bit of a wake-up call. And we go to Champaign, Illinois, and we have to circle the wagons a little bit because – you don't get that one. Now you're behind the eight ball a little bit. Yeah. So we already had, not only, we had season pressure on us December 3rd. And that was good. And, I, and, I, and we were down 10. And I love how we reacted. And I, I think we've, we've gotten better 
since Orlando. We still have a ways to go. This group, I think as a coach and or my staff, we have to remember to keep teaching and keep helping and keep looking for things that are going to develop through the season. But I like what we've done since Orlando, and, and I think we go down to Indianapolis pretty confident. You and I talked about how big the Illinois game was in the pregame interview, but what I love about you is I've been around coaches that make people uptight. You are not going to do that. You didn't tell them how nah. important it was because you didn't have to. Everybody on this yeah. team knew that was kind of a back-against-the-wall game early for the big plans that this team had. Oh, there's no question. And then, you know, you're, you're down eight at half. You go down ten, ten in the second half. What I was really pleased with, and I talked to him about it when we got back from Illinois, how poised we were at halftime, how our guy, no one was frustrated, and Demetrius and Zach especially, our, mm. our two main voices, talking about here's what we need to do better and you know I got to be, be you know accepting responsibility I thought they were really poised we go down 10 they still were poised the place is going crazy and um, you know we go zone and we get some stuff going and we really finish offensively strong and, uh, and you know to win a road game a true road game for this group that was a good early thing to do and you know we talked about it here on the show jack i mean we've got two big 10 wins away from our building all right that's very powerful if we could get a third i mean it would be unbelievable for our resume we've got lots of questions from our audience for coach so we'll be back to ask those questions right after this first time out it's the mike bray radio show live from a rooks public house presented by tireact.com welcome back to the mike bray radio show live from a rooks public house nick is here from south bend coach how do you feel about your bench play so far you know, I'm really happy with the three guys that right now are the guys coming off the bench for us. We talked about Matt Ryan already. Matt Farrell's going to be a guest here in a little bit. And, you know, he's really helped us. He was fabulous at, at, at Illinois and um, comes off. He gives us another ball handler. He can give Demetrius a blow. Um, he's able to break down defenses and drive and kick and cut. And so we like where he is. And then Torres being that energy guy. We never know how many minutes it's going to be. Come in, fly around, rebound, block a shot, run the floor. Maybe five minutes, maybe seven minutes. You know, hey, Saturday it could be 17 minutes. If we're in foul trouble, you never know. But Austin has done a great job of knowing this is what I do and whatever he asks me to do it for, minute-wise, I'm ready to do it. I, he's been very mature and secure about his role. Brad Donovan's here tonight from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Coach, how do you approach a long season? What is different now in terms of conference play and then tournament time? Well, I mean, you, you know, as much as bracketology is out there on the websites now, I mean, you know, we, we, you, you got to try and kind of go. Day, it's day to day, man. You're listed day to day. And it's an amazing marathon of what this thing is, the ups, the downs. And, you know, me personally, I try not to get too high after a great win or too low after. You know, you try and stay pretty steady. I think your team then reacts better. And always with that attitude with our staff of coming back and teach, come back and teach. come Because we have great students. Our, our guys, they want to be good. They want to be coached. And, you know, what do you have for them to get better today? Getting better weekly, little steps. Based on what's happened during the first six weeks of the season, too, there seems to be a ridiculous amount of parity out there in college basketball this year. Well, you know, I said this to a staff meeting today. I said, you know, I look around the ACC and maybe the nation for that matter. Not a lot of people haven't figured it out. We don't, but that's no. good. Like I said, we don't have it figured out yet, but I don't think many other people do, so that's a good thing. We're all kind of in the same boat. I don't think there's great teams, you know. There's not lock. They're not flat-out lock number one seeds. Like probably last year, three of them you already knew were going to be one seeds. So that's, a, that's good for us as we're trying to find an identity. There's, there's a lot of stuff to still play for. Well, and, too, this, you – Raised this program to the level. I mean, last year you beat the eventual national champions twice, twice. including once, yeah. to win the ACC title. You took Kentucky down yeah. when nobody thought Kentucky could lose to the end of the game, lost by a point, and probably showed the next guys yeah. how to beat them. I think uh, we did. Because it was a similar did. game plan <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, it was. So, was. I mean, I know you intend to be right in the middle of it. Bill McDonough's here from Granger. Who's the real deal outside of Notre Dame in the ACC? Uh, the real deal, um, you know, I, I know North Carolina lost a tough one at Texas, but, you know, they're, they just, they're big and they're, you know, their personnel is really good. They're going to be there. Well, and they're working Paige back in. They, they didn't yeah. have him for a long you time. You know, Duke's, Duke's going to be right there again. They're different. They're young, but they're, they're going to be right there. I'm very impressed with Miami, who we repeat. They're, 
really good. Virginia may be the best team. And we open with them January 2nd. Hey, thank, congratulations thank, for winning yeah. the title. Thank God we play them once. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but yeah, Georgia Tech's better. Mm-hmm. Wake Forest and is you play them twice. Yeah, Wake Forest is better. Um, I'm looking around. Florida State is better. Pittsburgh the is league's better. better. There's no question. So Syracuse is going to be tough. Syrac- Syracuse is good. I mean, come on, yeah. they're going to be. There's so many distractions with Bayheim. When I look out there, they still got like seven. Well, he'll be back when you play. Yeah, and they still have seven really good players. Yeah. So I just hope we can get seven or eight bids out of this league to be seen. I guess to be determined. Karen Morosky's here from Grays Lake, Illinois. What's your biggest concern this season? Yeah. Oh God, I. Well, you know, I, you, you know what I've said, and I've said this, I said it today on a couple of Indianapolis radio shows. Um, this group wants it so bad because of what they tasted last year. Their bar is really high. They're, they're very hard on themselves. And I got to keep them loose a little bit and enjoying the process. And when we do make mistakes, can we get on to the next play quicker? And I've addressed that with them, and I think my demeanor is very important because we have some very intense, we got to do this, we got, and if I go back with the same theme, then the screws just get turned tighter Mm -hmm. and we can't even make layups. But I I think that's a great trait to have because they want to be special. They felt it before. We're a long way from that, and uh, you just got to help them get there, and I want them to smile some as we're doing this thing, Jack. Andrea is here from Chicago. How has the team dynamic changed after losing Connaughton and Grant? You know, it's, it's what's so interesting what I do. When I lose seniors and we had two powerful personalities go out the door, what is the vibe? What's the personality of the team? Well, Demetrius Jackson has strongly taken over as the main voice. Zach August has become a leader I never would have dreamed of. I'm very proud of him. V.J. Beecham is more vocal as a junior. So is Steve Bastoria and even Bonzi Colson. So those are the personalities. The starting five's personalities run the locker room, and I like those personalities. But make no mistake, Demetrius is the strongest of personalities and the most vocal. Katie Williams is back, diehard Irish fan. Coach, are you surprised that Grant isn't having more playing time for the Knicks? You know, I am a little bit. I'm disappointed. You know, I know he hasn't shot it really well, um, but I just think... You know, there was talk that maybe he'd be the starter, and I still think that could be, you know, where this thing goes. But uh, if you let him play with the main guys and not the second unit a couple times, I think you'd see amazing production. Um, But he also knows it's hard. It's going to be hard, but it's you have so many games, and there's such you got such time to kind of reinvent yourself and come back and. You know, Jaron's been a pretty mentally tough guy. He's bounced back from a lot of things, and uh, he just needs to stay ready and be ready to go. But I, I, I think if he, pl- if he played with their key guys, they would see. I think they'd see production out of that group that they're not hitting right now on, on the offensive end and the defensive end because I think he's a better defender than their starter. Mary Kate from Des Moines, Iowa. Who on the team has shown the most improvement, and what do they bring to the team? Well, uh, you know. All those starters have stepped forward and, you know, done more. They, they're all in different roles, so I'm very pleased with all of them. You know, a guy that we really needed to be able to count on, and he had a disappointing march last year, but he's playing so well and so confident now is V.J. Beecham. So I'm very pleased where he's at, and I'm very attentive to his psyche and confidence because we need him in the frame of mind that he's in now. We don't need to revert back to wondering if he's a good player. So, uh, you know, and I think we're out of those woods. He's a junior now, and he's a main guy, and he's starting, and he's playing 28 to 30 minutes. But I've been really happy with how he's rebounded because he he was disappointed how he finished the season. Another guy who's playing with great confidence and really helping you is Matt Farrell. We're going to meet him in a second. But first, I want to remind you, making our community brighter, it's what NECA electrical contractors do every day through community involvement efforts like sponsoring the Notre Dame Basketball Youth Experience, which gives area youth groups a trip to Purcell Pavilion to see Coach Bray's Fighting Irish in action. The NECA contractors and electrical workers of Local 153 preparing Michiana for a brighter tomorrow. And I got an urgent text tonight from our crack marketing guy, Brian Proctor, wanted me to remind everybody that the Liberty game 
leading into the new year is now at 5. It was scheduled for 3. It's been moved for 5 p.m., which actually, for those of you who have to work for a living, which Perfect. is most of you. Perfect time. You know, just stop off on the way home, yep. and you'll be home in time for a late dinner. Pack your sneakers, put your sneakers on, come to the game, and you'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be back to talk with Matt Farrow in a moment. This is the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House, presented by TireRack.com. And please welcome Matt Farrell, point guard from Pleasant Beach, New Jersey, sophomore who has really had an amazing impact on your team. And I know I was glad your dad, very well-respected high school coach, last year when you got antsy because everybody wants to play, was very supportive about coach knows what he's doing, just keep working hard. And now you're playing a huge role for this team. Yeah, I think uh, my dad's been always in my ear, you know, especially when I was young. Uh, you know, last year, um, got a lot of great players. I was playing behind, you know, a lot of great players. So in practice, I was just trying to improve every day. Um, I think something that helped me a lot was playing against Demetrius, you know, and Jaron last year every day. And I think, you know, my dad was always talking to me about that. But, you know, I trusted the system, and I was just doing what I had to do, you know, just trying to help the team. I know when he signed, you and I exchanged texts, and you told me, Jack, you're going to love him. He's got an edge. He's like McElarney. I-95, that New Jersey edge that, uh, that I love so much. But, uh, no, we were thrilled when we signed him late, you know, and it was a great pickup for us. And certainly there was a little bit of a – not a little bit, a lot of bit of a Notre Dame connection uh, to this place with his family. But, um, and last year was hard, uh, but he was smart enough to realize, you know, we were pretty good. And he was playing, you know, against Demetrius and Jaron every day, run the blue team. This summer, I thought he made great progress as we played him with the key guys. And, of course, you know, already he's been a, been a huge contributor for us. Another ball handler, another guy who can go off the dribble and attack and make a play. That's the one thing where he's not playing safe when he comes in. We want him to go for it. And I think that's been an evolution for him. He's an improved defender. You know, and that's helping him stay in the game and be more productive for us. But uh, he's a key guy. He's a key guy for us right now. And I think he's getting more and more comfortable and confident in his role. And certainly Kyle McElarney, one of the best three-point shooters here ever. Very aggressive on offense. But I'll be honest with you, I think you're a better defender than Kyle was. Would you agree with that? Is Kyle listening to this show? Probably. In France? Probably. Yeah, he is a better defender. <laughs> <laughs> he but, is. Well, when you talk about having an edge, and again, you're a Jersey guy, and we've got some questions. I mean, when you, you ask about your favorite stuff, a lot of it has to do with New Jersey. So just talk about that brand of really physically tough basketball. It's not a basketball on a playground where you call a lot of fouls. Yeah, no, uh, to this day, I think me and Steve are always telling people New Jersey's best basketball state in the country, you know, <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up, like you said, my dad was you know, a high school coach for 18 years, uh, coached three NBA guys, so I was always around. Um, I think the big thing with me growing up was, you know, I was always playing with my brother, these older guys down at the park, down at the playground, and you're right, there was no fouls. Uh, I think it's just New Jersey's state of mind. I always tell people it's a state of mind. Um, and like I said, I think the best basketball is played in New Jersey, you know. You're averaging just under 17 minutes a game. You've gone over 20 minutes a number of times. And really, uh, and everybody knew it. Coach doesn't make a big deal out of it. I knew it. Illinois was a huge game because if you didn't get that one in a hostile environment, then, I mean, who knows, in a tough conference, you, you're kind of, you've got your back against the wall, and you came up with a career-high 10 points, made huge plays in that game, 23 minutes of action. Just talk about your mindset when you went into that game. Yeah, I think, you know, like, like you said, that was a huge game for us, you know, trying to bounce back. Um, I think Coach Bray mentioned, you know, we were in the locker room, you know, nobody was worried at all, and I think that's something special about this team. You know, we're always poised. Um, everybody's talking in the locker room, you know. We've been in this situation before. Um, Illinois hasn't. Um, so we knew, you know, second half we were going to get going. First half, we, you know, our offense wasn't, you know, kind of vibing very well. Um, once our offense got picked up, we started playing defense. And I think Demetrius has always been in my ear, just keep being aggressive. Um, so that's something I wanted to do in the second half, and I was just trying to make plays for my teammates. You're certainly going to hear about it this year because Boston College is one of Notre Dame's repeat opponents. But you verbally committed to BC, and there was a little bit of instability in the program that year. And then I know everybody started calling coach, big-name people like Bobby Hurley and others saying, Matt's the real deal, and, and you ended up committing to Notre Dame. Well, when you take the floor this year against BC, you think you're going to hear some of it? You think yeah. they're going to be in your ear a little oh, bit? Um, <laughs> you know, I never try to let any of that bother me. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when we played Monmouth. Does it fuel you, know? you a little bit? And again, you, King Rice really went after you with Monmouth. So yeah. I'm sure you heard some of that then too. Yeah, you know, it's, it's something that's always been in the back of my mind, but I try not to let it uh, bother me. I think, you know, playing BC, I think me and Bonzi are always going to get excited about mm -hmm. playing BC. Um, 
I think that's going to be a big game for us. And obviously, we want to go out there and play well. Um, but yeah, I try not to let that stuff bother me. I just try to go out and play my game. I mean, Monmouth is good. You guys played well against you. You didn't make your free throws. That, that's probably the main reason why you lost the game. But how many of those guys do you know? And it's a good thing that they're good because their sideline stuff is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I know all the guys. Um, you know, I know all of them. Play, I play pickup with them a lot. Um, I know the guys on the bench were. Did they do that stuff up. in high school? They did. Um, <laughs> One kid in high school I used to play against all the time, and he was, he was a wacko, you know, ever since I knew him. Um, you know, they're having fun. They're a great team. Um, I think we had trouble guarding them, you know, off the dribble, and I think that's something we're continuing to get better at. Um, but, you know, I just every time I talk to him, I you know, just tell him to keep winning. Keep yeah. doing your thing and keep winning. Older brother Robert, best friends with Theo Riddick. How did that happen? Is that true? Yeah, they, uh, they went to high school together. Um, funny thing about Theo, when they were little, he said he was never going to come to Notre Dame, hated it. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, he ends up here, uh, had a great career here. Um, you know, he's, he had a little bit of family problems, so he, he was always over the house. Um, and after he committed, he was always talking to me about Notre Dame, how fun it was. And we used to come out here and watch him play. Great kid, and he, he just uh, became one of, part of the family. Certainly lots of Jersey folks down in Florida. Your brother went to the University of Tampa. Is he still there? Is he, is he graduated now? Has he moved on? He's graduated. He's actually stationed in Texas, so he's okay. at Fort Hood in Texas. Because he was an ROTC there. Yes, sir. And I know you respect the heck out of him. I do. He's, he's a different breed. Uh, <laughs> he does things that I definitely can't do, so <laughs> he's special. Now, your granddad's Notre Dame grant, so there's another connection here. Just talk about how much did, did he talk to you about Notre Dame? Oh, ever since I was little. We used to come to football games here. Um, my whole family got a big family. Um, all he talks about, you know, he's wearing his Notre Dame stuff every time. I'm sure on Christmas he'll be wearing the same Notre Dame <laughs> sweater that he always wears. Um, I think, you know, my whole family's Notre Dame fans, so I think when I opened up from B.C., it was, they were all in my ear. You know, what about Notre Dame? Where's that, where's that at? My grandpa's always asking me about it. Um, it's special. It's definitely special to have um, our family, huge Notre Dame fans, and they love coming out here. Everybody, whether you're an athlete or not, if you went to college, you know what exam week is like. I want you to explain this. You tweeted out. You had a prayer symbol next to it, but entourage <laughs> is the only thing that is getting me through finals week. What did that mean? I do. Uh, that's my favorite show, all-time mm-hmm. favorite show. Um, I try when I get stressed. You know, Bonzi's always yelling at me. I'm always watching movies. I'm always watching TV. Um, I'm either watching Goodfellas or Entourage all the time. Um, I think it helps me get my mind off things, you know, brings me back home. Um, it is stressful, and I think basketball obviously helps practice and you get on the floor and get rid of some of that stress, but that, that's definitely one of my main stress relievers. Well, Goodfellas, classic movie. It's also the background in your Twitter page. So <laughs> does that say Jersey to you? It does. Uh, a lot of people call me out for that. They're always, I'm always quoting Goodfellow movies, uh, Goodfellow lines. Bonzi always making fun of me for it. You know, Bonzi doesn't understand New Jersey. A lot of people don't understand it, so I, I got to explain it to him. Um, but yeah, that's something I grew up with, my father, uh, all my grandparents. So it's definitely something I take pride in. So I know we will, we'll do that fast break thing again. I just reviewed the one. We've already aired yours on TV and put it out. It was very popular on the web. Uh, but <laughs> is Bon Jovi on your list of favorite guys uh, as well? Of or? course. You know, yeah. Steve's always listening to Bon Jovi. So What about Springsteen? Absolutely. Got to, right? Jersey guy. Yeah. But when I asked you your favorite musical group or artist, you came up with somebody most youngsters wouldn't come up with. Yeah, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. Uh, that's Jersey, baby. That's, a, that's definitely Jersey. I think that's due to my, my mother and my grandma. Um, I've seen it on Broadway a couple times, surprisingly, with uh, some family members. Um, it's cool. Grandfather used to play it, so I grew up listening to that stuff. And <laughs> I actually used to listen to it before games. So. It's great music. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ooh, we got to let him know that. Maybe we get a little, you know, private concert when we'll play out there. Get him out there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, get him out to a game. I would love have that. him sing the national love anthem. That. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, we've got, you've set the player record early in the season. It's still early for questions from the audience. We'll get to those questions right after this timeout. It's the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House, presented by TireRack.com. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Radio Show, and tonight's show is brought to you by TireRack.com, revolutionizing tire buying since 1979. They've got their game plan down. The team of experts includes more than 8,000 independent recommended installers ready on the sidelines, and their very own test results and consumer ratings and reviews help make buying a new set of tires as easy as a layup. TireRack.com, find, deliver, install. You know, their, their facility's out on the west side, and if you've never been out there, they have a test track out there, literally, where they have races and things, and you can actually go to the warehouse and buy tires, and they'll stick them on your car. Mm-hmm. So you don't even have to do the catalog if you live around here. This is from... Katie Lister. Do you know Katie? Dude, she, she favors my tweets sometimes. Yes, she has a lot of questions. Yeah. She's here. Katie, where are you? Where is Katie Lister? Okay, there she is. All right, Katie. First of all, for Matt, 
Does Zach August cut your hair? Ooh, no, absolutely not. I will not let him cut my hair. All right. Nick, Nicholas from Boston. What is your favorite romantic comedy? Ooh. <laughs> the lucky one. All right. Allie Lister. <laughs> Katie, I'm sure related to Katie. Is Allie over there as well? There's Allie. All right. I heard you like Broadway. What is your favorite show? Jersey Boys. That's an easy one. And then Ben Johnson is here. How are you going to work with the offensive speed of Indiana? So there's your first question. I don't think you haven't gotten a scouting report yet because no. it's exams, but I mean, you're a student of the game. How are you going to slow them down? Yeah, I think, you know, like Coach said, they, you know, take us off the dribble. I think um, we got to play team defense, trust each other on the backside. And I think we're growing in that, you know, every day, uh, trusting each other, being in help side. Um, I think a big thing for us is we're trying to take charges. We talk about it all the time in the locker room, you know, trusting each other on defense. And I think that's definitely what we're going to have to do against them. All right, here's your fast break. We've already asked some of the questions. Uh, first car you ever drove? A Jeep. Who is your role model? My brother. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? Love going to Broadway. I do too. Musicals or anything? Musicals drama? and shows. Love them. Plays, see, everything. See, people wince. It, it brought, there's nothing like a Broadway musical. Agreed. I mean, like yeah. Miserable. I mean, it really, it's not a non-guy thing it's to do. It's a great place. It is. It's, it's outstanding. Place. Or Book of Mormon. That's a whole I've heard, uh, yeah, I've heard that's, I've heard that's supposed to be one of the funniest oh, things oh, ever. I you better be yet. ready. Yeah, I haven't you seen that You better be ready. Yet. That was good. It's coming to South Bend, by the Is way. Is it really? Yeah, it's coming to oh. the Morris. What did you do on your first date? Went to the movies. All right. Favorite NBA player? Mm. That's a tough one. I said it was Steve Nash. He retired. Uh, probably now. I love Ricky Rubio. I love watching him play. All right. Favorite thing to do in relaxing? Watch movies. Favorite sport to play other than basketball? Baseball. Favorite part of practice? Five-minute shooting. <laughs> Worst part of practice? Free throws. Best part of your game? Uh, I think just attacking off the dribble, getting in the lane. Part of your game you need to work on? Defense. Always trying to work on defense. What's better, knocking down a long three, blocking a key shot, or grabbing a big rebound? Grabbing a big rebound. Favorite class you've taken so far at Notre Dame? Intro to theater. One person you would like to meet, alive or dead? Mm. Frank Sinatra. That would be cool. That I mean, the be. older I get, the That's more I listen one. to Sinatra. That's He's definitely one. in my car. One thing you always hear from Coach Bray in practice? Mm. Be more aggressive. Assistant coach, who is most like Coach Bray? <clears throat> Rod Bellanis. They kind of look alike, too. Do they act alike and stuff? I think so, a little bit. Do you ever look over on the bench and see both of them, like, doing the same stuff? <laughs> I don't think anyone can do what Bellanis does on the bench sometimes. <laughs> he's, he's a special breed. Player on the team most like you? Steve. Best nickname on the team, and who has it? Big Baby, Bonzi Colson. Now, do you room with him on the road, too? Uh, I did, yeah, we did last time, yeah. All I right, like so living them. I like living with them. You guys okay. can't be a part. I was gonna say best player to room with on the road's gotta be Bonzi, right? Yeah. Toughest Notre Dame player to guard. Uh, Demetrius. Best defender on the team. Demetrius. Best leaper on the team. I think Torres. I think Torres has the edge on it. Best dunker on the team. Rex, I think. Worst dunker on the team. Steve. Now Steve says he can dunk. He just holds back. I, I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? <laughs> I haven't seen it. I. I've only seen him miss two dunks. I've never seen Ooh. him. Yeah. See, we, we, for the TV show, we've already sat him down. He talked about that. We're thinking about we should get showing him d go out and get video of him dunking. Dunk him. But he they should. said maybe Coach doesn't want that because he doesn't want to hurt himself. <laughs> I think he's big on the, the two points is two points, you know? Two points That's, is two yes. points. Well, that is true. You don't miss, if you don't try any dunks, you don't miss any yeah, dunks. Exactly. <laughs> Best dresser on the team? Zach. Worst dresser on the team? Me or Steve. Best singer on the team? Bonzi. Worst singer on the team? Torres. It's Best awful. comedian on the team? Best comedian. Me. Guy on the team who thinks he's funny, but he's really not. <laughs> oh, that's tough. Call somebody out here. <laughs> you can pass. Martin Gebbin. Ooh, Martin, this will be on there. Now, you grew up near the beach. So this is a good question. Freestyle swimming race, one lap. Who wins, you or Coach Bray? Coach Bray. Coach Bray, definitely. I'm not, I'm not a very good swimmer. I don't really like the, uh, I don't like the water. 
You know, you didn't you didn't no. hang out in the waves much or anything. No, you, know, you weren't no. surfing. He was in he was in the gym all yeah, the time. You can't play basketball. Working we're on his we're game. Court, courts yeah. on the beach yeah, or yeah. anything. Hey, great job. We'll be back with more on the Mike Gray Radio Show right after this. Welcome back to the Mike Gray Radio Show live from O'Rourke's Public House. So, <laughs> it's uh, they're they're ready they're ready for the weekend. They are ready. They are ready. All right, t- talk to me about the challenge. Really, we already talked about it. Crossroads helps, but you get them back. Uh, I think you said four of your guys had tests tomorrow morning. We got four tests in the morning. I think practice here in about 30 minutes will be a little more clear-headed because some guys are done. Mm-hmm. Um, it's about four guys with tests in the morning. We'll practice at 1 and bust Indianapolis. Now, you don't get to go because the Pacers are playing, is my understanding, Friday. So you don't get onto that court no. until – You'll just treat it like you won't have a shoot around. You'll just yeah. get in, warm up, and go play. Yeah, but what's great, though, is when you're the first game, you can get there a little early. Mm-hmm. So you can get a little more shooting than you usually would maybe for an evening game. So we'll get there. Plenty of time. I love we're playing with the Wilson basketballs. Um, that's the ball we use. And I, I don't know. Sometimes with all these rule changes, the one piece of equipment that we've messed with the most is the ball, the most important piece. We have Nike ball, Under Armour. I wonder what – offensive stuff would look like if we all played with the same ball for two months we play with the wilson ball because it's the ncaa tournament ball and we'll always play with the wilson ball but when you think about it the most important we talk about rules and rough play and 36 but we play around with the ball the most important piece of equipment and i think anybody that even played around in the playground you actually, you'd even have your favorite no. ball that was the same no make, question. and you wanted to use no. that ball, and they do feel dramatically different, and you've had a couple of teams where you had really good shooters that let it get in their heads, like we, The Rock. They didn't yeah, want to shoot no, The Rock. I know. We, we have a closet full of balls. If we're going to play a, t- a team that plays with the Nike ball, we break them out and use those for two days, and, or the, you know, the, the Adidas ball or, or, or The Rock. Um, so I just that that's I don't know if you know everybody has their ball and oh, apparel you've been steadfast because even Under Armour oh, makes yeah. balls and Adidas made balls yeah, and you we're, were like no we're playing Wilson no we're not we're staying with the Wilson ball that is the NSA tournament ball uh, but I just always wonder if we played with the same ball for two months all the teams what would numbers offensive numbers look like because we're talking about scoring because the NBA plays with we, the same they, ball everybody's got the same ball everybody's got the same ball the most important piece of equipment. We, we play around with and we don't really ever address and maybe because of apparel contracts we can't. Um, but, you know, scoring needs to go up. Maybe if everybody got used to the same ball for two months. We'd have to tweak all the other rules. Yeah, may, may, maybe. I'm just, you know. Right, you were on the rules committee. I'm sure you brought it up. What kind of response did you get? You know, I brought up. I don't know if you've seen it, but Wilson, and I'm a loyal Wilson guy. Mm-hmm. I've been with Wilson 21 years. They came up with the wave ball. There's waves in it, and there's some high school federations, New Jersey, that play with it. And they floated that to us. This was seven years ago when I was chair of the rules committee, and I said, look, I'm a, maybe this is a conflict of interest. I'm a loyal Wilson guy, but there is no way. <laughs> That's kind of gimmicky. Yeah, yeah. We cannot play By with waves, the waves. What did you mean? Color? Or? No, there's waves in the ball. Really? There's ridges through the ball. Now, it bounces true, but your grip's even. And they're not even. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's called the way. Crazy. You Google it. Look I at will. It. I will. Yeah, like some high schools use it and, you know, but it, if we could all play with the NSA tournament ball for a couple months, it, it'd be interesting. Hey, Demetrius Jackson, he, he has two, three balls he marks that we play with. You know, the guys that have it in their hands a lot, they know what feels good and what they want to play with. So, you know, I'm sensitive to that. Uh, but obviously the, we are using the Wilson down there. Well, you know, I, I don't think there's any sport that has a bigger home advantage than basketball, and maybe that's one of the reasons why the home team's playing with their ball. There, there's, there's something to be said about that. There, there really is. And uh, I, I got a uh, – when we, we had a year where we shot it great with the Rock in the Big East. And they wanted us to change to the rock. They've been coming after us every offseason. Mm-hmm. Oh, join us, and you know, we'll do this for you. And the guy actually compiled our shooting stats with the rock, and it was like, ooh, he got my attention a little mm-hmm. bit. But now we're – Wilson is the NSA tournament ball, and uh, if I were to change balls now, my players would boycott and yes. revolt if I changed basketball. So I'm not messing with that. 
All right, big game Saturday. We have one more break to talk uh, to uh, help pay some bills. And when we come back, it'll be all IU here on the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. We're back at the Mike Bray Radio Show, live from O'Rourke's Public House. We actually have about a minute and a half, so IU is a challenge. They're 8-3. and three. They're starting to put it together. <coughs> and they're talking about you're probably the best team that they've played so far. Other well, than Duke. Yeah, I mean, offensively, they're amazingly impressive. 53% field goal percentage, 43% three-point field goal percentage. Those are numbers that are way up there. And I certainly know offensive numbers because we've seen our teams yes. put up. So I, I, I uh, fully respect their offensive efficiency and uh, power. Uh, playing fast, spreading you out, driving the ball. They've got five, six guys shooting it from the three-point line at a high clip. Um, you know, we're going to have to be good offensively. We're going to have to score to win a game down there. And you've got to change tempos, you know, and, and that means changing defenses and changing tempo of your offense. But unlike the Illinois game, you can play free and easy because if it ends up, I shouldn't even, it <laughs> might be the, not the W, yeah. it's going to be considered basically a home game yeah. for them. Just go down there, let it hang right. out, and see what happens. Well, we're going to be loose and going for it. There's no question about it. Um, we know it's going to be a really intense road atmosphere. We've already played in one of those with Illinois, so we feel we're, you know, can we stay poised in that? I think it's a great matchup of two teams that can score the ball. I think it'll be very entertaining to watch. Yogi Ferrell, Demetrius Jackson, Indiana point guards. There's really good stories. And then the second game's a great game, too. It's just a good day of basketball down there. I'm excited about it. 2 p.m. Eastern time on Saturday afternoon. Now, we're going to take a little break for Christmas, and then we have a game at B.C., on Thursday, January 7th. So we're back here on the 14th. So don't forget about us. There'll be a lot to talk about on the 14th. Until then, thanks for coming out. Thanks for listening. Coach, thank you. Good night, everybody, and go Irish. The Mike Bray Radio Show has been presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame partners Sprint, Coke Zero, Under Armour, and Gatorade. The Mike Bray Radio Show is also presented by Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Bank of America, Xfinity, First Source Bank, Great Clips, Papa John's, St. Joseph Health System, South Bend Orthopedics, and O'Rourke's Public House.